Hey guys, Jplay here, and today we're going to be looking at uh, Gems of War. So this is a match three game, but not just any old match three game. It's a match three game where you complete quests and there's a storyline and it's got this sort of uh, drafting mechanic. It's, it's almost like something like Magic the Gathering Hearthstone or something like that, but honestly with a lot of the complexity removed um, and the battling strategy instead is to play match three. There are obviously a huge amount of these sort of match three with a twist games on Steam, or more like uh, storyline based games, but where they have swapped the gameplay for match three. And how you feel about that is really going to affect how you feel about this game, but I'm quite enjoying this. It's, it's quite addi addictive. There are a lot of uh, nice little touches, even if there is a sort of... Uh, not not quite pay to win element because you can get everything for free but it will take a long time to get certain things um but anyway base form of the game is we have these uh these places i've unlocked a few now um where we can go in and follow a quest storyline so i've kind of i'm leaving the broken spire for now because i have got a bit stuck so I need to do some quests elsewhere to, to almost grind uh, for more more resources more ways to upgrade my cards um, so I'm going to go into Karakoth and just quickly fire up a, a mission um, the story with this is with this specific uh, region is about uh, this guy who wants to fight slavers, but there's other stuff going on. I'm not going to go too much into it in case it spoils the story for anyone. I mean, the story's not the best, but it could be worse. And there, um, but it, there's something just really addictive and well presented for what it is about this game. So essentially, we match three. You take it in turns to match three, so that that adds a nice tactical element because you can't. Rather than in a normal match three game, you might try and set yourself up for your next move. In this, you actually would try and set yourself uh, set yourself up in such a way that the opponent will have less options. Each of these colors corresponds to uh, the color in the corner of one of these sort of, I'm, I'm calling them cards, I don't know what else to call them, um, one of these troops, and when you collect uh, however many, it powers them up and lets them use their special ability. Um, if you collect skulls, it directly attacks the first enemy, and if you collect four of a kind or more, you get an extra turn. So it's always worth going for the four of a kind when you see them. Or at least making sure that the enemy cannot use them. And for now, I'm going to try and match some blues and yellows. I mean, and I have arranged my deck in such a fashion that hopefully I uh, can get value out of every gem. I think I can. Um, so that's part of the drafting mechanic is just ensuring that you don't have because if my second character was only brown and my third character was only brown my third character could only uh, get brown mana or brown gems once the second character had filled up and charged up its weapon or if the second character died so that's not the most efficient um Instead we are, yeah, instead I've tried to get a nice balance going between all these types. Anyway, I will uh, use my hide and sneak move. Deal five damage to an enemy, gain an extra turn. And I would like to damage, I'll just damage the first one. Uh, so there's then an element of choosing which one you attack. Uh, this guy can deal six true damage, that's damaging, ignoring armor, uh, to me and poison me and gains magic. I still don't actually know what magic is. These first two enemies are the same. Um, 
This guy deals 7 damage to an enemy, deal double damage if they're poisoned and poison them. And this guy will deal 5 damage to an enemy and remove all purple gems to boost damage. And that sort of goes up over, over time how much damage uh, they do. Is, is dependent on how leveled the card is, as it were. So when you're going through the normal campaign, just the further you get through any quest path, the more powerful people will be. Anyway, I should probably do some more matching, because that's how the game works. I'll just go for that one. Um... Right, so I'm going to try and get some yellow mana because I want to charge up this dude here. Uh, my ability allows me to do 4 damage boosted by the amount of gems I remove. And there are, there are a couple of elements here, so partly I want to boost it by the number of gems removed so that I do maximum damage. Partly I could think, what do I want most of or do I want least of to be on the board? Is there any way where I could delete things in such a fashion that what remains would match three? I can't see anything like that, so I'm just going to go for him. And uh, you can get these sort of cascade things um, where multiple, multiple things are triggered uh, one after another because of what you've done, which is obviously nice. So there, there's again an element strategy because that'll that'll help you charge up your uh, charge up your units for further attacks, and it will also potentially, if you can do it in such a way that you Man match three, uh, match four or more, um, it will do so in such a way that you get an extra turn. Sorry, I'm skimming to see if there's anything worth doing. So that's my goblin gone already. Um, I quite like him because he could attack and have an extra turn, but he's far from the strongest on the team. So it's not the end of the world. I really want to get some brown or purple. That doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Let's go for red and yellow. Again, chain a couple here. Give me a bit of an advantage. Although I guess the greens don't really... So while ostensibly they may be uh, matching things is good, um, there's not much point to matching things if I'm not going to get any benefit out of it. So I want to charge up this rather than use my red powers. I should be paying more attention to what is going to be charged by what I do. But I'm not. So I wanted this because this attack will uh, destroy this dude's armor and do 6 damage to him. And that's obviously situationally really good. It might have been worth using the skulls um, rather than doing my special attack yet because the enemy could have used them to damage me but it all worked out okay because the AI always wants to go for um, I hate poison uh, the AI always wants to go for whatever will give it the most what will give it an extra turn above anything else which can scupper it in the long run in a way which a human player might think about if they were more thoughtful than me I don't need extra turns but I can just kill him there anyway actually um, yeah it's, I feel especially foolish trying to do a match 3 game while talking because then I struggle with the strategy part and then I feel like I'm not bright enough to play match three. Um, anyway, so that's that's a, an actual mission and you get all these bonuses from it so you see I have my 
glory up here, my money up here. Uh, these diamond things, I haven't seen what they're spent on yet. Um, but one of the main things you will do with these now is uh, open chests. And I actually have accumulated a lot of keys here. Uh, mostly so that I could show how this works. Um, you can also spend money on them if you don't have any keys, but I just want to... So, I'm going to open 12 chests. It's going to go, right, these are these are what you've earned. Just clicking through these quickly. That succubus looked interesting. I don't know what they do. Drain two enemy mana from an enemy and place death mark on them. Place, pull an enemy to first place and stun them. That one's quite interesting. I uh, don't care about orcs. Is village a new? Oh, I must. I had peasant before. I'll transform it. Transform into a werewolf. That sounds interesting. And you see, I got some trait stones as well. I'll quickly talk about what those are. But also, there are these different chest types. So this one is your your bog standard. These ones are the glory chests. Uh, which we spend these little wings on. Gem chests, again, they'll have even better stuff in, so that's what those diamonds are for. Um, guild chests, this, this is for stuff you get from completing guild tasks, I think. And VIP chests. I mean, at this point, it feels like to to open 50 chests you must have just paid money anyway another element we can look at here is uh, troop upgrades uh, using the a combination of the cards we've just got and a few other things which we earned through through completing levels this flashing thing here is annoying me I have taken a break for a minute and now it wants to reward me for coming back there is kind of this um, idling style uh, background crap going on like you would find in a a mobile game or a Facebook game one and it does have this uh, this shop here where you can pay actual money to give you an advantage in the game which is a bit it's not necessarily what I look for in a game but I mean it happens a lot with other games such as Hearthstone or whatever which have a similar drafting mechanic so I can't be too judgmental of it um, so I'm gonna quickly go and look at my troops I don't care about any of the ones apart from the ones in my deck here because I'm quite happy with the ones in my deck. Well, I am curious about this. No, I don't want to summon anything with her. So these are the, the cards I've got and I can use them in my deck and you should be able to see if there are any I have more than one of. Um, you could put more than one in a deck. The other thing you can do is this ascension mechanic where you sacrifice a card to work towards leveling up another card basically. So that's another reason to keep getting more cards whenever you have the chance. Uh, none of these are going to be ready to level up via sacrifice. Unfortunately, I was just hoping there would be one which I'd got to that stage. The other upgrades we can do are the trait upgrades, which I'm sure there was one I could do a second ago. Yeah, so you can see here there's this little symbol to say I can... Uh, upgrade the traits of this thrall. I'm not going to do it because I'd rather keep the trait stones for something which I actually want. Um, but when you do so, you unlock abilities for these. Um, another thing which is very useful is this level up mechanic, yeah, where you can improve them by spending these souls which you get at the end of battles and on a few other sort of drops. And she is the only one I can actually level up, so uh, might as well level her up just to demonstrate how exciting it is. Pow! Wasn't that brilliant? Um, anyway, that's that's essentially how it works. The, the upgrade mechanic. There's also a PvP section. So we can quickly come on here and see how Badly, I've got my ass kicked. Defense victories too, defense defeats too. That's actually quite good. Uh, so you can choose to play against someone much weaker than you, someone of kind of an appropriate strength, 
Uh, you, you're not actually playing live against them, you're playing against AI controlled version of their deck with the upgrades they've got. And you can choose to play against someone who is much better than you. This revenge thing here means that they kicked my butt already once. Um, but I'm not going to do that now because the gameplay is the same as what we've already seen. Uh, the other quite a fun one is a treasure hunt, so I had to make sure I got a map before I started recording. Which can take a bit of time or a bit of money. Um, and essentially this is just a, a non-competitive match three sort of a game. Where the idea is to, in the limited number of turns, we've got nine turns here. The idea is to upgrade these as much as possible. So you see the rewards on the right hand side. Um, you know, if you combine bronze coins they become silver, silver they become gold. And so on, up this up this rewards ladder and then the potential things you can get are much better uh, the further stage you get it to. The other thing is you still have that extra turn mechanic for matching three or more like four or more sorry uh, in a row so if we can figure out ways to do that that would be ideal because you see we've just spent a turn there whereas on some on some games I have managed to get you know, 30 40 turns however many so here just doing that should mean that it won't use a turn at all, but it also it doesn't get us an extra turn like uh, making one of these will. You see, with five or more. And this 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 is the most addictive game mode, to be honest. The rest has its story. The rest has all the other stuff going for it. But there's something so satisfying about this. Yeah, I'm sort of rushing it because. I am trying to talk while doing it and not spending long enough finding the matches. Uh, also forgetting that the gems will turn up wherever you sort of... Uh, the gems will turn up on the place where you move something to, so... Whereas in other game modes they'll just disappear entirely. And this has been a useless use of a treasure map. Which is a bit disappointing. Extra turn. So that was a poor attempt at that treasure map thing, and you see here we get all these bonuses at the end, which is quite satisfying. Um, this is the third time I've tried it, and it's never gone this poorly before, but that's how it works when you're recording things, and you get some extra trade stones, that sort of thing. Um, this will tell us the bonuses, we didn't get any special keys, you know, we didn't get anything particularly exciting here. Thank <laughs> you. 
that's a bit better. Um, still not ideal because I one day I really want to get that final chest, but it's supposed to be difficult, obviously. And let's see what we get from particularly these red chests here. So we've got a few of these keys which we can then use on glory chests. I'm going to quickly go and open those, see if we get anything exciting. So these should all be rare or better troops, or they should be at least major rune stones, or... I guess I'll have to look at the... Uh, the gin. Hmm. Both of those are quite good. I already have a devoted. And I think a gold chest key as well. Now, was there something? It wasn't in this shop that you could buy things for. Yes, you can buy souls. There's no... I don't know why you would buy souls or maps or any of these things. Perhaps uh, I should be saving up my glory. But anyway, uh, that is in essence the game. Um, you play Bejeweled and you upgrade your cards. And there are some fun little mini games, but there is also this pay to. Uh, what do we call it? This microtransaction model, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but I don't hate as much as some people. I haven't found it's really got in the way. I'm never going to get well ranked in PvP, but I'm not that fussed about that. It's just a fun extra touch. Um, anyway, for now, I have been JPlay recommending again uh, against my expectations before I played it, but recommending Gems of War. Uh, that's a surprisingly addictive and fun little game. And for now, cheers for watching. <laughs>